Giovanni. It's a surprise bonus day from Tony Robbins. Hello, friends. That's it. family. You know, we had a little separation anxiety, so we were like, we just got to bring you back for a bonus day, for a sixth day. How are you doing? We've missed you these last 24 hours. Whoa, yes. All right, so welcome to our bonus day. We want to get right into it. We have a very special guest joining us today. His name is Tony Robbins, obviously, and then we also have Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> It's going to be a beautiful, extraordinary day. You know, Tony loves to add so much value to you and someone that he wanted to have to share his lessons with you is Matthew. And that's what today is really all about. You're going to have an amazing experience of an interview between Tony and Matthew. And he's so much more than just an incredible actor. He's gone through so much in his life that he's really pulled out the secret to what Tony loves, the word of fulfillment. How can you be fulfilled in your life and have what Matthew calls green lights? So today is a gift from Tony to each and every one of you um, because Tony loves to add more value and surprise and delight you. And it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful day. So even though we've had five days together, you have been such an engaged and incredible audience. We're blown away by you. You in the community Facebook group, in the chat boxes like YouTube, our VIPs, you have not held back at all. And because of your engagement, you've asked so many questions, we weren't able to get to all of them. So here's what's going to happen today. Um, number one, we're going to warm our bodies up a bit. You're going to have Tony do some live hot seats. So you don't even have to be in VIP. Tony's going to answer questions live today to this exact community. We call those hot seats. So some people are going to be brought up to the screen. So make sure your camera's on if you're capable. Have a little smile on your face and get ready for some really cool shares. Tony will be answering your questions directly, and then we'll have this powerful interview. Yes. Uh, you also know that our actual seminar, Tony seminar, Unleash the Power Within, is coming up in 44 days from today, I believe. Again, congratulations to those of you that are taking the next step. This was step one. This, this challenge, it's inspiring you. It's giving you some amazing education. And the next step for all of us here is to go a bit deeper and actually go to a real seminar from Tony, which is Unleash the Power Within. So Tony will answer your questions that you've sent in to him. I'm going to take a moment right now, 90 seconds, and answer some of the questions that came in from this community that I can help you with, which are more logistic-y and, and specific. So uh, question number one that came in from this community was, what are the hours of the event? Like the time zone, when does it start? Is there a replay? So I'm talking about Tony's seminar, Unleash the Power Within. The time zone for that, if you want to jot this down, is Eastern time. That's the master time zone, and it will go all day long, like 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Now, the reason that this question, I like to answer it so you have the knowledge, but I also like to remind you that Tony runs on Tony's standard time. So it's not a real time zone. It's Tony's specific time zone, which means he's going to be going all day long until you get the outcome. The major difference between what we've done the last five days in that event is you actually have full immersion. You're going full blast into your night life, not like a couple hours then going back to life as you know it. You're going to completely pluck yourself out of life currently and drop into a training experience where all four days you're 100% fully focused. We have a global audience. We'll probably have over like 190 countries at this next event. It's going to be wild. Um, that's just shooting from the hip, just a guesstimate. Um, but people from all different time zones. So we have a sleep doctor that will help you if you need to switch your time zone or anything like that um, just for those four days. And if you're thinking it sounds like, wow, these are long hours. I can't imagine that. Um, I'll share with you because I know from experience in my own life personally going to so many of Tony's events and also people in my life, my family, my dad, I shared with you guys that story. Time becomes something you forget. Like these last five days when it ended, how many of you were like, it's done already? My gosh, that went by so fast because you're like, Tony, stay with us. Give us two more hours, three more hours because time really does become an emotion. So just know like you can do this, okay? You can go there. You're not even going to know that the time's going by because you're so immersed in your own transformation. So I hope that helps. Um, Eastern time zone, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. You really want to block off all day so you can be fully present. Um, second question, and I'm sure this will have more color given to it throughout the day today, but a lot of people wanting to know the difference between what we did in this challenge and Unleash the Power Within. And that makes sense because there's like 70 or more percent of you. This was your 
first time training with Tony. Um, number one, you're not going to be like in his basement. Okay. You're going to be at a studio that costs millions of dollars to build and it's interactive. So like you have apps on your phone that you can shake and it's engaging with him in the room and there's music and there's sound and there's immersion and there's training and it's multiple days long, not a splash of time. And the major difference is that an experience like this, Tony designs to give you an inspirational effect so you could see a potential for yourself beyond what you've memorized in life, but beyond who you've been, who can you become? And you're not just thinking it. You're moving this information from your head, which for most people, it lives there forever. How many of you have someone in your life that they're constantly like, oh, I know that. Oh, I read that. Oh, I heard that podcast. Or you're like saying, wow, you should have heard this Tony Robbins guy. I know all that stuff. Tony who? I know that. And there is a difference between knowing and doing. Is true or true? Like we could finish Tony's sentence and know the quote, but there's a difference between knowing it intellectually and it living in your body. That's what Unleash the Power Within is. It's you wiring it into yourself hour after hour, day after day. So after the fourth day, it's living in you. You return home, but you're transformed. You're different. You're not trying to memorize it. It's a piece of your identity. That's immersion. That is transformation, not inspiration, which these last five days have been amazing. But that's why your next step is to go deep. Hope that supported you. Third and final question. Let's get this party started today. Um, will the offer really go away soon? Listen, I am honest. This is a challenge only offer. If you come back in a couple days, this challenge will be gone. This challenge offer, the total transformation package, it will be gone. The bonuses, Dean's confidence bonus that he's giving you, the um, the financial fundamentals from Tony, you could have a million, uh, a million bucks in the market or a dollar, the entire transformation of your financial, financial product process in one program. Both of those bonuses are gone. You guys are getting the full event, the preparation, the integration, the ultimate edge, like that entire thing we showed you. It's over $2,000 of value, real true value that we created for you. It is only for this challenge. So yes, it will be going away. You want to move and get yourself in and sure you could buy a ticket later, you know, when this is over, but it will be like $695 just for UPW. So this challenge offer is only for the next couple of days. So you have a final chance to get yourself in. And again, that link is upwnow.com. Um, why not go to bed tonight knowing that you have your next step locked in? Okay. Um, that's it on the questions front. Again, if you have any, you can just tag us in the comments. We're looking and we want to answer and help you guys. So just uh, send those in. Now it is time to get our bodies warmed up, our physiology engaged for this amazing bonus day. So I'm going to invite you right now to shake out your bodies. And if you can physically stand up, go ahead and do so. We're going to crank the building for three seconds, then bring Brian to the stage. Three, two, one, shake it. Come on. Absolutely love I love you. you. I love you. Oh, okay, guys. This is a bonus day. You get to look at this face for one more day. I'm not sure I'd call that a bonus. I'm not sure I'd call that a bonus, but I'm going to read you something here. I have, uh, if you guys haven't read Tony's Life Force book, absolutely read it. Um, I'm going to read you something here, uh, run around 254-ish, when he starts talking about Egoscu and how he discovered Egoscu and things like that. Egoscu believes that the human body is perfectly designed, remember that, perfectly designed. And it's only when pain creeps in because we have let the human body, being perfectly designed, get stuck basically in the same habits all the time. So if I was sitting in this chair built by the lowest bidder on my phone doing this all day, no wonder my traps and stuff like that are gonna do this. This last weekend, I was teaching at a dental conference too, a massive like thousand dentists, and they wonder why they walk up to me and go, something seems to be twisted and they're standing like this. Meanwhile, they always work on the human body that way. So remember what we're gonna do today we're gonna check our balance and we're gonna do one or two things sitting and then we're gonna get this room moving because Tony and everybody else are coming to you on this bonus day with a massive, massive delay. Let's have you guys just 
stand up for a second, shoes on or off. You're just going to check where your balance is left to right. And I cannot wait to see you guys at UPW. We're going to take that to a completely, if you haven't it, it's going to go to another level. But wait, again, you get to see this pretty face at all these events. <laughs> okay, so now have a seat in your chair built by the lowest bidder. And I want you to think about sitting toward the front part of the chair. And I'm going to tilt this down because remember, this is what the body should look like. This is a Goscue at the center of everything that I do from a biohacking standpoint. So. I'm trying to get you to a point where you even view your chair as a way for you to come out. So for you to get the most out of this challenge today, let's get you moving. So here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna tilt this down and I want you to take your pelvis and just sit in what you call crappy posture where your mother would walk up and go sit up straight, right? Or maybe it's just my mother, she's Italian. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your pelvis and I want you to roll your pelvis forward to put the arch in the back. So notice what I did not do, I didn't do this. Let me stick my chest out and up. This does not go northbound. This is just as important as getting your feet straight standing. So roll your pelvis forward to put a massive arch in your back. Hold that. And now take your hands like we did standing. And you're going to do this position and close them together and then open them back up 15 times just like that sitting. So keep going. Here we go. Let me see you guys. Roll that pelvis forward. Open and close your hands while you have that arch in your back. Let's go. Ah, oh, you guys look amazing. This is beautiful. I think it's like over 1.5 people worldwide right now. Let's go. Good job, you're good job. That's so good. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now, same position with your hands like this. Roll that pelvis up to sit up straight, relax your shoulders, pin your shoulder blades down and back, put your arms out, and let's circle forward 25 times. Here we go. <laughs> Keep going, guys. The big deal about first, like you're doing now, and then the payoff for the cold plunge, the payoff for the sauna, the payoff for blood testing and everything that I do, ends up showing up. So don't waste your time. Get a bigger ROI. Get your body in alignment. Holding this position, go palms up and circle back. Here we go. Last exercise, here we go. No matter what you're doing, if I'm sitting in front of this biocharger, it's with a body that's aligned and can accept a lot of the energy that it's giving me. So don't waste your time with this kind of stuff. We gotta get your body moving. And now I'm gonna stand up for you because we're gonna go running. I love this. And I just left this dental event, so I gotta show you. Look at these dental socks. So good. Oh, so good. Only brush and floss the teeth you wanna keep, and only brush and floss the joints you wanna keep. That's what we're gonna do now. So here we go. 15 second sprint, and then we're gonna bring everybody back. Up. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, go all out. It's the last day. Let's go. As fast as you can. As fast as you can. Come on, guys, another level of that. Oh, I love it. These kids are kicking butt. Where they go, kids? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, switch sides. Remember, 90 degrees, not rock 'em, sock 'em. Here we go. Ready? Go. Here we go. Come on. Look at this. Come on, kids. I love the smiles, guys. There's another level. The camera hits him and he up to the level. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Please get up today, guys. This is your bonus day. This is for you. We'll see you later. Thank you so much, Brian Bradley. Everybody stay standing. Get some energy in your body. It's time to begin this beautiful bonus day. A gift from Tony to all of you. So let's welcome this amazing man to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Tony Robbins. Shake the building! Make a sound that unleashes 
you this morning. Come on. Oh, yes. Get some virtual high fives or fist bumps or some in person. Sit down, you know the drill one last time. Big sip of water. Hydrate. And then in your chair, create more energy than when you were standing. Break it up. Good afternoon, good evening. How you all doing out there, ladies and gentlemen? If you're feeling strong, make, make that fist and say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Awesome. Well, listen, I was reading your posts on Sunday, and, and uh, as I was doing them, I, I was struck by, first of all, how much progress so many of you made in such a short amount of time. Well, yeah, give a hand for everybody for that. That's awesome. But I noticed a couple of patterns. Um, one of those patterns is this idea of like, oh my God, I feel so good, but I don't want this to go away. And it, it'll only go away if you don't do it, right? You gotta have a daily practice. And again, I'm not selling you. I know so many of you are coming to the seminar now to the Unleashed Power Within. So you're gonna have the experience of making the change in your body and your nervous system, not just in your mind. And so I want to touch on that today. But I also thought, you know, I, I think I mentioned on the first or second day that most people, if they're trying to improve their life, they look for a strategy. Um, some people look for philosophy. And I remember when I was a kid, I'd say philosophy. Well, yeah, what does philosophy matter? But philosophy is just a big word for the beliefs that guide your decisions, the beliefs that guide your perceptions of life. Whether you're going to be pissed off or angry has a lot to do with your philosophy, your belief systems. You remember the core belief we offered you on that first day that's changed my life was beginning to say, okay, life is always happening for me, not to me, even though it looks like it's happening to me. My job is to figure out how this is to my advantage. And if you recall, we talked about thinking back, and I know we've all had experiences 5, 10, 20 years ago that were painful. There's nobody who doesn't have those. But what changes your life is sometimes, sometimes, 5 or 10 years later, you wake up and go, Oh my God, I'd never want to go through that again, but thank God I did because it made me so much stronger, made me care so much more. How many can relate to this somewhere in your life out there, ladies and gentlemen? So it's really important, you know, that we develop philosophy that guides us effectively and then have strategies to get the results, but philosophy is going to determine whether you really, to some extent, succeed or not. Because you can achieve things by, you know, a strategy, and then find yourself in a position where all of a sudden, you know, you're still not happy. So we're going to walk in that. And the main reason I want to bring this little day to you is touch these real quick. We're gonna, this, this today will be much briefer. But also, I originally wanted you all to meet Matthew McConaughey, which might sound interesting. He's a great actor. He's one of the great actors of our, our generation. But uh, he wrote a book called Green Lights, which I read. And I, it changed me in my perspective completely. I thought he was a good actor. But then I was like, holy cow, what this man went through to get to this position in his life is mind-boggling. And his values and his level of happiness and fulfillment is so different than most of the people I deal with in Hollywood. And he's become a friend. And so originally I wanted to be part of the challenge, and he just couldn't do the days the last minute because of the thing related to his movie business. Um, so I did a quick interview with him that I want you to experience because role models make it real. And, you know, somebody like Matthew McConaughey, for some people, is like, well, he's way out here. But if you get a little picture of what the philosophy that guided him, that got him through the rejection, that got him to make things happen. It was kind of like uh, the lady was mentioning the other day that, you know, rejection is God's way of protecting you, that that wasn't the right person for your life, right? Certain philosophies are so simple. But the minute, if you buy into them, if you believe them, if they make sense to you, they change you in a heartbeat. So I thought it'd be really interesting. How many excited to hear from Matthew out there, ladies and gentlemen? Really good? I think he's, in 30 years, he's made 40 movies, to give you an idea. He's got Golden Gloves, got Oscars, but most importantly, he's got a beautiful family and a beautiful life, and he's not caught up in all the Hollywood hype. He's got his own standards, so you're going to enjoy that as well. So let's start, though, before we do anything else, 
I'm reading through all of your Facebook posts again, <laughs> all through the afternoon. Yesterday I could do it in the afternoon and the evening. And, um, and I came across a lady. Uh, her name was Jersey Pink was her nickname, but her real name is Shelly Shivotskins. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And I noticed she'd been to the events before, and so she bought for strangers. She thought three strangers unleashed the power within who thought they couldn't go. So I just want to acknowledge her. Let's bring her up on screen. Give it up. Give it up for Shelly. I was just so touched by that. I wanted to meet you and thank you. Why did you do this for three strangers? Well, actually it was four amazing, kind souls. And I just wanted to be a rainbow in someone's cloudy day. You know how oh. the, the quote goes? Wow. There's so many amazing people out there that just don't have, sorry, I don't want to cry. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to see you. Um, I meet you. There's so many amazing people out there that for whatever reason, in a moment, don't have the opportunity to become even more amazing and live their fullest potential. Yes. And it just broke my heart. And actually, the girl that started it, the woman that started it, is an amazing, beautiful soul named Magdalena Caron. Sorry. Yeah. She offered, she wasn't able to afford to go. Um, you know, she has three children, um, mm -hmm. twins. Um, yeah. And she offered to give $20 to someone to help pay for their ticket. Wow. And I messaged her on Facebook and then I um, called her on Messenger. I didn't realize she was in Poland and it was two in the morning. <laughs> and <her kids> <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about this community, it's all over the earth, right? <laughs> I know. And I just had the most amazing talk with her. Yes. And um, I said, hey, I have this extra ticket. Um, I was going to, I accidentally bought two and I was going to give it back. But I think you would be so deserving, beyond deserving oh, of having that beautiful. opportunity. That's really beautiful. And then I saw somebody else commented on there as well. <laughs> A girl, um, a woman named Kinga Krupa, who also was in Poland. Who oh I also woke, woke up her kids accidentally at 2 a.m. in the morning. Her two boys. You got to get you to recognize area codes, I think, here. <laughs> well, I saw the Facebook Messenger, and I, I, oh, messenger, I felt so yeah. bad. But <laughs> we FaceTimed, and we were, you know, crying over each other's stories, and then... Oh. I found another beautiful soul who offered to donate too, named <laughs> Doria Loon. She wasn't in Poland. She was right here in the Thank United God. States. <laughs> yes, just outside of Philly. So, but okay. um, we were texting and then she was cooking dinner and she almost caught her house on fire. <laughs> she almost caught her house on fire. A dangerous not woman, <laughs> Shelly. <laughs> As she was making dinner. She did it, though. It was all good. And she <laughs> saved the dinner, too. That's good. But, um, you know, I ended up buying her a ticket. And then I saw another one. That was Danielle um, uh, Najarian. And she is originally from Jersey, um, but living in Arizona. And she just has a passion and desire to um, use her degree in psychology. Wow. to help others and yes. she hit a really rough time yeah. she I guess was an actress or tried to was a pursuing a uh, career in acting in yes. LA and then moved back when the pandemic and stuff hit and 
felt just a stronger desire and passion to instead use her degree in psychology to help so many more. That's beautiful. So there's just so many stories. Have you, like have that. you been to the UPW yourself? I assume. No, th- I, this is my first time. Um, I actually wow. had a friend wow. from medical school told me about this seminar on Monday, and I signed up Monday wow. for Unshakable. So wow. I can't wait. You have no idea what you've done for these people, and. You know, I do this all the time when people stop me on the street and everything else since there. So I, I'm really glad the way you, I listened to your criteria. I really love your criteria. And that is like people that are going to do this. And my invitation to you is to invite them to then pass it on. I mean, my goal is when I give something, I want them to become the giver too. And also, though, I've also found the balance because I've done a ton of this, as you might guess, over the decades. But it's also a balance for some people to find the way. You know, because for me, not having the ability and having to find some way to get through something that's impossible before I even got to Jim Rohn's seminar, that's what built the muscle for me. But I think you chose well. And I want to just thank you for having such a beautiful heart. I can't wait for you all to experience the event. And so I'm going to invite you to come to Date with Destiny as my guest, which is my six-day seminar. It's the best thing that I do. So for taking care of those people, you just got it returned to you tenfold. So you stay on the line. We're going to give you a date with Destiny. Give her a hand, everybody. Beautiful job for Shelly. Let her hear you, Shelly. look forward to seeing you there. Well, let's do a couple of questions because I've done this each day for the VIP group. Let's take a couple questions and then let's uh, get a chance to meet Matthew. But before we do, I want to give you some just five, five givens. Um, I read a book years ago. I forget what the title is, to be honest with you, but it was by a man named David Rico. And in it, it had these five givens. And the givens were the things that if you, the way I would describe it anyway, is if you Take in these five beliefs, these five understandings, these five givens about life. You can not be so shocked and hurt. This is what I was thinking about when I was reading so many of your forms. Because so many of your forms, if you have these five beliefs in you and reinforce them. Now, again, like everything else, yeah, it was called The Five Things We Cannot Change and Happiness We Can Find by Embracing in Them. That was the title of the book. And David Rico is the guy. That's this gentleman's name. Thank you. My team grabbed it quickly. That was awesome, guys. <laughs> Thank you for that. But uh, really what it is, if you can take on these five beliefs, a lot of your upsets will start to go away. Now, you got to take them from intellectually reading about it or understanding it intellectually to getting it in your body. That's the biggest thing I think many of you are missing right now. We've done two hours a day for five days, which is wonderful, so you understand it and you start to make some shifts with it. But the only way you get lasting change is build muscle. Remember I talked about the idea of you know, emotional intelligence is a wonderful thing. Some of you study emotional intelligence. It's a set of abilities, talents, skills, understandings. But emotional fitness is much more powerful because you can have the ability and not use it. You have to condition yourself to be fit so when the challenge happens, you automatically do it. And that's what you're going to experience when you come to the event is you're going to experience 12 hours a day, four days and nights of total, complete immersion, doing it day and night, night and day until you won't have to think these things will happen automatically. But here are five beliefs I'd like you to jot down and consider that if you do, a lot of the pain that I read that people had, you'd still have the pain, but it wouldn't last because you'd have a deeper understanding. And by the way, I do want to say this. There's so much suffering in the world, right? But please jot this down. This is different than these five beliefs. Suffering is never in the facts. The suffering you have is not based on the facts of what you experienced. When I say suffering, I don't mean pain. I mean pain that seems to not go away. And some of you you really caught yourself because you've been telling yourself the same story over and over again, so it keeps creating the pain over and over again instead of letting go, moving on, and building a new story, right? But make a note, suffering is never in the facts. Suffering is always in our perception of the facts. Jot it down, please. Suffering is never in the facts. Suffering is in our perception of the facts. Our perception is where all our pain or all our pleasure comes from. So like I said the other day, let's say, for example, your mother died and you're close to your mother. Of course you're going to have pain. Of course, the sense of loss. 
But if you keep that sense of loss for six months, nine months, 12 months more, then you're not suffering because of the facts. You're suffering because of your perception that your mother shouldn't have died, as if you're God and have that kind of knowledge. How many follow what I'm talking about? If it makes sense, say I. <laughs> it's your perception of the facts or your perception that now she's gone, whereas there are people that have lost a husband or mother, a brother, sister, a child, and as you saw on the first day, there are some people that have managed to create gratitude and still feel connected to that soul, even though they're not on this plane. Or they're just grateful for the time they did have. So their perception is, I'm so grateful for those three and a half years with my baby girl before that cancer took her, as opposed to, I wish she was taken too soon. She was taken before I could do this, taken before I could do that. And stacking all your perceptions about what should have happened. How many follow the difference here? Say I. <laughs> So one thing that could help you a little bit, I know this won't sound like it's very helpful at first probably, but I've used this over and over again for myself. I put these five little core beliefs and I looked at them every day for about a month and I thought about how to apply them. So the first one is everything changes and everything comes to an end. Isn't that an uplifting thought? <laughs> everything changes and everything comes to an end. But first of all, is it true? Is your body going to change, yes or no? Are relationships going to change, yes or no? Yeah. Is the economy going to change, yes or no? Yeah. Look, as I told you day one, change is automatic. You don't have to work on change, right? Change is going to happen. Progress, that's different. Progress requires consciousness, caring, focus, attention, strategy. If you're going to make progress, you've got to take control of your life. But I do want you to notice, because when I read so many of your forms, it's like you're shocked, you're hurt that something ended or that something changed, your relationship changed, or your career changed. I was reading an article over the weekend, and it was all about in the tech sector. I think there's been like 180,000 jobs that have gone out of the tech sector in like a month. 10,000 jobs from Microsoft, 7,000 from this, 5,000 or 7,000 from Facebook. You know, it's a huge number of jobs. But the article was, it was all about, it was from Business Insider, and it was written clearly by a younger generation person going, these people are betrayed by these companies. And people crying and saying, this is so unfair and this is so unjust. We used to get up every morning and have breakfast at, at my office and we'd have lunch and sometimes even dinner with these custom meals and we had free wine. Because in these tech companies, they had all those things. My meditation process, I didn't just lose my company. I lost all these ancillary benefits. And this is unfair, this is not right, this is... And they're angry about being let go. As opposed to saying what you learned on day two, we're not all equal in the marketplace. We're equal as souls, but we're not equal in the marketplace because if you develop yourself so you're more valuable, if you have more skill, more ability, if you do more for customers or clients than anybody else, no one's gonna fire you. There's a reason they let you go. And the reason they let you go is you're not that valuable instead of these people betrayed me. So a better way of just understanding is everything's going to change. Your job's going to change. Your career's going to change. Everything changes. Everything comes to an end. But here's what I would add to that. But that'll feel terrible unless you realize an end is a new beginning. So I would add that. Everything changes. Everything comes to an end. And that creates the opportunity for a new beginning, a new career, a new level of health or vitality, a new relationship, a new level of joy. But you have to understand that things are going to end, things are going to change. And if you, if, that, if you don't have that understanding in your gut, I don't mean in your head, then when stuff happens, you're going to freak out. Relationships change, so you've got to obviously change and grow with them. If you don't, you're going to have the pain that I've read about in so many of your posts. If this, if this makes sense to you, raise your hand, make some noise so I can hear you out there, ladies and gentlemen. So it's like you got to remind yourself, okay, I don't like this. Nobody, you know, everybody wants things to better, but no one wants to change, right? You know, no one wants to go through the change part. but Because you know why? Because there's uncertainty in change. You don't know what's happening next. But you know the contrast? If everything was always the same, where you knew what people were going to do, when they're going to do it, how they're going to do it, every day, every moment, how would you feel? Bored out of your mind. Who agrees with me? Make some noise if you agree with me out there. I, I, I may have mentioned this on the first or second day. I think I did, but it probably went in passing. One of the most important beliefs in my life, and when I tell you, most of you, it won't make sense to you right now, maybe. But I'll tell you what it is. It's the, the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably live with. 
you got to jot that down. The quality of my life, the quality of my life is in direct proportion. Quality of my life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty I can comfortably live with. One more time. The quality of my life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty I can comfortably live with. Not the amount of uncertainty I can survive, right? Now, why do I say that? Because if you need things to be the same and certain all the time, you don't grow. If you don't grow, you're not going to be happy. What did I say on day three, four, I think it was? What does it take to be happy? I've seen it all over the world. One word, progress. Progress equals happiness. If you're supposed to lose 50 pounds and you're not there yet, but you lose the first five or 10 and you're moving in the right direction, you're going to be excited. When you lose the 50 pounds, you'll be excited for a while and then gradually you'll lose your excitement because what we're really driven as human beings to be is to grow. If you stop growing, it doesn't have much your body is great or your money or your relationship or your business. Growth is what brings us life. And we grow, we have something to give, which makes our life more meaningful. So everything changes, everything comes to an end, but that means there's an opportunity for a new beginning. And if you can add that, that's not part of his book, I think it'll shift you. So many of your forms are you're hanging on to something that happened in the past where there was a change in your business or your career or with your parents or someone died. Things come to an end, but it's time for a new beginning. And that to me is the only way to consciously live your life because otherwise you're lying to yourself or you're trying to make everything stay the same and there's no such thing. How many get it? How many see how important this is to your freedom? Say I. The second one to me is obvious, but so many people are upset. Things don't always go according to plan, right? That's a given. Write down, that's a given in life. Things don't go according to plan most of the time. Does that mean you don't plan? No. If you watch a good movie, or if you watch, or you read a great book, and here's the story. Watch the story. Here's the story of the life. The movie opens, or the book opens, and the main character is really happy. They're excited, they're healthy, they're fit, they're in love, they have great relationships, they got a great career, they're doing well financially, and they're spiritually alive. That's how the movie starts. Then in the first act, by the end of the first act, they're still really happy, healthy, fit, great relationships, great economics, right? Really happy, spiritually alive. You get to the third act, and they're still happy, healthy, strong, great relationships, great business, great economics, great spirit. And you get to the end, and it's the same way. (laughs) Who's going to go to this movie? Nobody. Because things aren't supposed to go according to plan, because when they don't go according to plan, we learn something. Now, some of you, when they didn't go to plan, you beat yourself up. I screwed up. I should have this. I don't know why it didn't fall through. Because it didn't go according to plan. That happens all the time. So create a new plan and get to work on it now. Stop hanging on. And by the way, when you beat yourself up, my friends, again, I got to tell you, what does that do to your energy? Increase or decrease? Show me. Which one is it? Increase or decrease? It takes it down. Now, when your energy goes down, your state goes down. When your state goes down, your behavior gets even weaker or worse. So it's like things don't always go any plans, so create a new one. And it's not supposed to work. You're supposed to learn from when it doesn't work. Here's the third given in life that would be very helpful for you. Life is not always fair. No shit, Dick Tracy, (laughs) right? How many found life is not always fair here? Come on, make some noise and see that. How many have seen somebody who was totally mean, unfair, unjust, inauthentic, or manipulative get rewarded while you or someone else who was doing the right thing did not get the rewards, who's experienced this before? Make some noise. <laughs> who told you life was going to be fair all the time? I mean, that's another, uh, when I read your forms, I'm saying, wow, this person thinks life's supposed to be fair. I know it's not supposed to be fair. It will ultimately be fair if, you know, like my little hat says, you know, be a blessing and you will be blessed. All right, if you keep doing everything you can to bless others, you'll be blessed. And that may not come from that person you helped. They may reject you. They may not even appreciate all you've done for them. They might steal from you when you gave to them. Who's that somebody in business you gave to steal from you? Most of us. But then the benefit comes from back here from somebody you didn't even notice because you're so busy noticing what you didn't get here. Life is not always fair. I didn't say it isn't fair. I said life isn't always fair. It's always fair in the long term. 
but not necessarily in the moment. So jot that down. It's always fair in the long term if I do my part. But it's not going to be fair in the short term always. In the short term, sometimes, even you, sometimes you do the wrong thing and you get rewarded. People acknowledge you. And then sometimes you do the right thing and no one even notices. So if you're going to have a great life, you have to decide, I am going to reward myself when I do the right thing, even if no one else notices. I'm not doing it for them. And if I do the wrong thing, even if they think I'm great, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to change it. I'm not going to put up with that shit. Jot this down. You get what you tolerate in yourself. You get what you tolerate in yourself. I used to tolerate all the excuses why I couldn't do something. And my excuses, I could show you they were real. I don't have the money to go do this thing. I mean, look at this. I'm working 40 bucks a week as a janitor. This thing's going to cost 40 bucks. I can't go to this $10,000 with $1,200 then, $10,000 seminar here with Jim Rohn. I can't. I don't know anybody. I don't have any credit. I'm 17, but I found a way because I said I'm not going to tolerate that because if I tolerate that, I will not have the life I want. It's not fair that my dad got kicked out by my mom, but he let it happen. It's not fair that I got chased out with a knife. But you know what? It all is more than fair in the end. My mother is probably the single most powerful force that shaped my life. I love her dearly, even though there were challenging times. She got crazy when she was on drugs. Most people do. It wasn't fair, but it was great. Do you get it? If I had not been on my own, if I had not had, if I had a net to catch me, I wouldn't have become the man I am. I always, think people say, oh, you know, aren't you upset that your mother did all this? No, I mean, it's like, was I upset at the time? Of course. But it's like, I wouldn't be the man I am if she'd been the mother I'd hoped she would be. And yet she was even more than that in so many ways. So much of who I am was shaped by her. She's such a good soul. But we look at people's behaviors that are horrible and we judge the whole person these days. We look at people, what they said or did 10 years ago, five years ago, and try to hold them as if they're the same person. What kind of bullshit is that? So don't add unfairness. Life is not always going to be fair anyway. So don't be unfair to yourself. Don't be unfair to others. Don't expect it to always be fair, but notice it'll be fair long term. Jot down. Be a blessing and you'll be blessed. If you keep giving, if you keep adding value, if you keep growing, it'll be more than fair. Fourth, given that you might want to operate. Pain is part of life. So many people are like, oh, I can't believe all this pain I've been through. Suffering, pain is part of life. Suffering is a choice. When you keep telling yourself the same story, when you keep going over and over again why this relationship didn't work or this business deal fell through or your economic situation can't be solved, the more you tell yourself that story, the more hypnotized you are. You know, it's like someone saying, go get me the salt. I don't know where the salt is. I don't know where the salt is. Go get the salt. I don't know where the salt is. It's on the second shelf. I don't see it. Because you keep telling yourself that same story. While you're busy telling everybody how you don't have any time, you're wasting the time you could figure this out. While you're telling yourself you don't have the money, you're wasting the time you could go find the money for what you need. Resources, again, are never the problem. It's resourcefulness that's the problem, right? Could you do something for someone else? Could you say, listen, I want to make this happen. I'll do all these things for you. Will you help me, sponsor me, support me in doing this new thing I want to do? But you got to add value to other people. You can't expect that life is without pain. You can't expect that life does not have to be suffering. So pain's part of it. By the way, pain, how many of you, when I asked you on the first day when we talked about breakthroughs, and I said, what made you break through that day, that moment? Stop smoking, change the relationship, whatever it was. How many of you, it was pain that made you finally make a change? Make some noise if you did that, ladies and gentlemen. Then guess what? Pain is part of life, so use the pain. Write that down. Use the pain. Don't let the pain use you. Use the pain. I don't mean go into it. I mean use it to drive you. Disappointment can destroy you or disappointment can drive you. You get to choose. If you let it destroy you, that was your choice. You could have chosen. You still can choose. Everybody's life, everybody's life is either a warning or example. And if you think your life's a warning, you can make some new choices today and make an example. But you're only going to do it if you give up this idea that life's not supposed to change and nothing's supposed to end. No relationship, no business. Your life is going to end as you know it, at least in the physical plane. Things aren't always going to go according to plan. Life is not always going to be fair. Pain's part of life, so let's use the pain. Let's create a new plan. 
right? Let's, let's find a way to do something that's more than fair. Let's add value. Let's take that end and create a new beginning. And let me give you the last one, number five. People are not always loving and loyal, right? People aren't always loving and loyal. And that's true. I mean, so many of you are wounded because somebody wasn't loving and loyal. How many of you have ever gotten an estate, honestly, where you are not being very loving or acting very loyal, even though you're a loyal and loving person? Make some noise if you've ever done that. So people aren't always loving and loyal all the time. Not even you are. So expecting people to be that way will only create disappointment. These five givens, let's throw them up on the screen all at once for people. Now, I've given you my alteration to these five givens, but as he taught them, these five givens, if you can adopt them, you can get out of your pain quick. Because most of your pain is because you think something shouldn't have changed or something shouldn't have ended. But everything changes, everything ends, so it's time to create something new. I mean, the pandemic, how many of you the pandemic changed everything and ended a lot of things, but now you've created something new as a result of the pandemic that's really good in your life. How many can relate? Even our being here, this happened because of the pandemic, because it's like, how do I reach people? And people are stuck in their homes and they need it right now. And I can't go to a seminar for 15 or 20,000 people because they won't let me in the stadium with more than 100 people. So it's like, okay, I want to help people. So first, like, I'll do a, I'm going to do a one-day seminar for people, you know, all over the world. And I was like, no, I'll do two, and then it grew to five, and now we're on the sixth day because I just want to make sure we help you as much as we can, especially when I read your forms, right? Things don't always go according to plan. I know that. So this didn't go. What did I learn from this? Let's make the new plan. Life's not always fair. This isn't fair. Who cares if it's fair or not? Let me figure out what to do to make it better. Pain's part of life, so let me use this pain to move forward, not use this pain as my story about why I'm not enough or why I don't have what I want. And people aren't always loving and loyal. They just aren't, right? Everybody gets in bad states. Maybe I create a little room. Even I've done that at times. Much of your pain would disappear if you could adopt these five. So I'm asking you, maybe take these five and maybe the ways I've added to them that convert them to something positive because for them, you go, everything changes, everything ends. That's depressing, right? Well, it's only depressing if you don't create something new. If you don't realize that things changing, it's like the seasons. They change for a reason. Every season gives us a different lesson. Spring is all about growth. It's easy. Summer is about pushing through the hot. You know, fall is about reaping and going and taking, wow, all the hard work I did in the spring and summer, I get to reap. And winter is getting you stronger and hopefully making you smart enough to use some of what you learned in the fall. That's what happens to human beings. That's the purpose of it. So this is philosophy. And philosophy sounds like not important, but it determines whether you're happy or not, whether you're pissed off or not. It shapes your story. So I believe in both philosophy and strategy. Strategy is how to change it. Philosophy is the what and why that shapes it. How many follow this? How many make sense to you here, ladies and gentlemen? Make some noise, it feels good. And so also, I just want you to know, many of you, you've been here, like we, we've grown up in a culture, all of us, since there's technology now, where we expect everything instantly, right? You, if, you know, in the old days, when I went to click on a clicker, I'm old enough that the TV, there'd be a little second before it shifts. Now, if you click a button, it doesn't shift instantly. What's the matter with this thing? You know? <laughs> it's called latency, right? I mean, I remember, I'm old enough to have had a fax machine. Has anybody here ever had a fax machine? Anybody here? A few people? I remember when they came out. And then the woman in my life, what do you need this for? And then we're using it every day. And then it was like, unbelievable. We don't have to wait for FedEx. We can just fax and get it right now. This is incredible. And then email came and someone's like, why are they faxing me? I'm sitting here waiting for now. Just email the damn thing. And now it's like, why the hell the email? Why don't they just, you know, instant message this damn thing or just text it to me right now, right? So our sense of life has changed to where we expect everything instant at our fingertips. But relationships don't work that way. You don't just push a button and have people respond to what you want. You can't just vent on people like you can in social media and get by with it because there are consequences in the real life. People say shit on social media and even in emails and texts they would never say to somebody's face. So don't say things. Don't do things. Don't let yourself fall into that place. You got you to free yourself. So this instant focus has made most of us dabblers instead of into mastery. If you're gonna master something, you gotta go deep. If you're gonna master something, you don't just do the surface and feel good because it's new and you're excited. You gotta get in your body. Mastery is in martial arts. I remember I learned from this incredible man who taught Muhammad Ali his 
breakthrough punch. His name was Master Jun Ri. He's a beautiful, beautiful man. And I remember we, I decided I wanted to get a black belt in the shortest period of time he'd ever trained anybody. I asked him what it was, and it was three years, and I said, I want to do it in a year and a half. And in order to do it, he literally agreed to fly with me around the world. This is when I was like 28 years old, I think, 29 years old, 30. Fly with me around the world, and I would finish my seminar at midnight, one or two, and I'd get up and do my hour and a half workout with him. I mean, I, I got injured. I did every single day with such intensity. But I remember I was doing this move and doing this move, and I'm like, you know, Master Rico, can't, can't we go to the next move? He goes, that is the next move, grasshopper. Right? The fact that you think this... And this are the same thing. They are not. You just miss by this much. Right? That's mastery. Versus most of us like, oh, I read about how to fly a plane. I could fly this plane. That's how most people think today. I've been online. Oh, you know, I remember I was interviewing um, the prime minister from the UK. And I had people getting up and they were talking about, you know, whether they were going to break off from the EU or not. And I remember some people getting up and they were lecturing him about, he's like, well, you know, I, I kind of have, I was prime minister for nine years. I kind of have a good sense of what's going on here, right? <laughs> These people have no clue. So mastery requires three steps if you want to jot them down. This is like why I do seminars. This is why you want to go deeper. Because dabblers are never happy. They're always disappointed. That's the person who learns a technique or two and then goes out and tries it a couple times. Oh, it didn't work fully or it worked partially, but it didn't work completely. Oh, okay, I'm done. That's, you're never going to succeed that way. Master. So here are the three levels. First level is cognitive mastery. Cognitive means you understand it. And as I mentioned the other day, understanding in $3 will almost buy you a Starbucks, right? <laughs> like no one cares that you understand. And I try to make everything so simple, of course you're going to understand it. And it feels good to understand it. But if that's all you do is you wrote your notes and you understand it, your life's not going to change. You got to go to at least to step two to start mastering something. And step two is emotional mastery. That's where you don't just understand intellectually, but you feel it in your body. You start to see the consequences. Oh my God. You know, this constantly coaching my partner, they're not feeling as coaching, right? They're feeling it like I'm, I'm attacking them. They're feeling like I'm, I'm not respecting them, right? Oh my God. I don't want to go into those four horsemen. I'm not going to roll my eyes anymore. If you could link enough emotion, you'll actually apply it. You won't do it. And oh my God, if I do this, I'm so much, if I make my move, if I make this, I feel so much better. Let me do that more. If you do, if you have enough repetition of what you understand with enough emotion, then you'll get to the third level, which is physical mastery. That's where you don't have to think about it. It just happens. It's in your body. You remember what it was like in the beginning to tie your shoes? Like you had to totally focus and concentrate and stick your tongue out. Some of you stick your tongue out still, but you know. But after a while, you can tie your shoes. You don't think about it. It's totally confident. It's in your body. You don't even think about it. Driving a stick shift car, it's automatic. But how you get there is you first have to understand it. Then you have to hear what you understand over and over again with enough emotion. It's like if I said to you today, where were you on 9-11? How many remember the exact place you were sitting, who was around you, what was going on? And no matter where you were in the world, make some noise if you remember exactly where you were. And most of this room is from other countries as well, so it's not just Americans. But if I asked you, where were you on 8-11, most of you have no clue. Because, write this down, information without emotional consistency is lost. See, information without emotional link to it, it's lost. You remember 9 11 is just so much emotion. You remember seeing here what was around you. 8 11, unless that was a special day, you don't remember it. So, what we've got to do is train ourselves over and over again. And write down one more thing repetition is the mother of mastery. I remember I, I, I went to this one class, I was uh, studying Aikido, and there's this really brilliant master. And I went to four of his classes. And it was one was stage one, stage two, stage three, four different classes. They're supposed to be different stages. And when I got to the third class, and he was telling the same stories in the third class as he told the first and second class. And we're supposed to be at another level. And I, I finally, you know, I went up to him and I said, look, I said, um, you're telling the same stories here. And he goes, I'm going to keep telling the same stories until I see you guys actually doing it. <laughs> he said, repetition is the mother of mastery. Jim Rohn used to say, repetition is the mother of skill. If you see somebody who's unbelievable at any sport and they can just sink the ball from, you know, 30 feet, there's a reason. They practice it a thousand times a day so that in the moment it happens. I mentioned this other day. Write it down again. 
if you didn't before. People are rewarded in public for what they practice in private consistently. People are rewarded in public for what they practice in private consistently. So you got to wire yourself. Once it's in your body, you don't have to think about it. As long as you have to think about it, it's going to help you a little bit, but not a lot. we got to condition ourselves. How many get how important this is in your nervous system here? That's why... It's great, you told, it's great you told your old story, your new story, but now you've got to condition that new story by telling it again and again, not once. Remember when I told you about how I did that run, right? And I'm on the run, and I did incantations the whole time, shouting as loud as I can for hours? You do that for hours and hours and hours, and it gets in your body, and all of a sudden, it's automatic. That's the place that's going to change your life. You can change your life with awareness and knowledge. There's no question. But if you're going to keep your life growing, you've got to wire yourself. It's like, it's like exercise. It's really hard in the beginning. But anyone who exercises for six consistent months and they do it right, meaning they don't keep injuring themselves, they do the right things, they'll exercise the rest. Even if they get injured, if something happens, they'll come back to it. Research shows for the rest of their life because it gets in your nervous system. And it's not hard anymore. But getting people to do it for more than six months consistently is the hardest part for most people. Once it's there, you have the victory. You have it for the rest of your life. You, you'll be fit for the rest of your life because you'll always be driven because it feels so good because you're so wired to do it versus right now in the beginning, it's hard to get yourself to do it. You're not good at it. It doesn't feel good. You're not fit. Make sense? So I really want to get across to you, don't settle for dabbling. Don't settle for you know, just the surface of something or you won't be rewarded. You'll have small rewards. If you want big rewards, dive in deep. And that's basically what I've done for a lifetime here. So now, let's take a couple quick questions, and I want to introduce you to Matthew. We have a couple questions? Give it up for some of the questions, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Question number one is from Marcello Murphy from Scotland. Scotland. And Marcello or Marcello says, Tony, I just lost my job. I've never been unemployed before in my life. And if I'm honest, I'm scared with the looming recession. I can't decide if I go after another job or start my own business. Wondering what I'll learn at UPW to help me get clarity and get through this. And this is from our YouTube audience. So he's not with us live, um, oh, but they're okay. tuning in. We can't in. bring him up on the screen? He's with our YouTube oh, audience. YouTube, YouTube. Yep. Oh, they can just see me. They, I can't see them. Well, uh, Mar 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 Marcelo, listen, first of all, I'm sorry you're going through this. Um, you know, none of us want pain, but pain's part of life, right? No, none of us want things to change. Does this sound familiar? Uh, but things end. And now's the chance for you to create a new beginning. And I, I like your attitude, though. I have to hear, even though I hear uncertainty in you, in your question, there's a part of you that's even willing to think about starting your own business, says to me that there's a, there's a resiliency that's available in you already. So... Breakthroughs happen almost always because of a crisis. In fact, right? Crisis equals breakthrough in your notes. If crisis is the one thing that makes people break through, when, when you wrote down the other day, what was your breakthrough? Most of you had a mini crisis. You had something that was so damn painful that you finally said, no more. Not another day, not an hour. I'm stopping this eating. I'm stopping the smoking. I'm ending this relationship. Who did that? Who knows what I'm talking about here? Say I. <laughs> Say I. <laughs> so... I look at a crisis, whenever they happen, I go, okay, this is an opportunity for a breakthrough. And I have to tell myself it doesn't feel good in the moment. I know it doesn't feel good for you right now, but I remember my grandfather uh, created Bozo the Clown, if you're familiar with that. He created Yogi Bear, the cartoons. Uh, he was part of the group that created uh, the Flintstones at Hanna-Barbera and so forth. And they, he, the guys he worked for worked for Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers had um, Bugs Bunny and things like that, and he got laid off. And in the layoff, they, they had no idea what to do, and there weren't other people to go to work for because Warner Brothers was the dominant force in all cartoons at that time. And so he and his partner, Hannah and Barbera with their names, decided we're going to start our own cartoon company. And at one point, they became bigger than anything else that had ever been done, including their employers. So you've got to discipline your disappointment and say, this is an opportunity. And now what you've got to do is create momentum. And Unleash the battle within is going to create that for you. So I'm so glad you're coming. But what will you learn? Well, the first thing you're going to get there is you're going to figure out exactly what you want in your body, in your emotions, in your relationships, in your finance, in your career. Because clarity is power, right? But then the best part of the event is going to be we're going to uproot. We're going to change the conditioning of whatever's stopping you. And what's stopping you are limiting beliefs, right? It's the things that you think you can't do or must not do or you have conflicting feelings. I want this, but I don't know if I want that. 
that's what's going to change. And that'll give you massive momentum because there's nothing holding you back anymore. When people go through the event, you know, we do the wood breaking as a breakthrough is amazing. When we do a, a regular event, sometimes a live one, people walk on fire. Those are great experiences, phenomenal experiences because they're physical. But the Dickens process where we rewire ourselves and everybody's different. I don't tell you what to believe or what you need to change. I take you through the process. That's going to change it for you. And then lastly, you're going to really get clarity of what it's time to create. And it all happened with momentum. And you're going to get the energy in your body because one of a whole day that's just on what to do. So this energy you have goes higher because you can make this energy happen just with your mind, but eventually that'll burn out. We gotta show you a few things you do with your body so that you wake up and your body is let's rock and roll, not just your mind let's rock and roll. Because as I said the other day, the worst thing is your mind says let's go get them and your body says I can't get out of bed, right? <laughs> That's the worst. So, so, but before you even come to UPW, in, in, or if any of you aren't going, I'll tell you a little technique I've used to help people who are kind of stuck with what should I do in my career or, or in a relationship. You can use this either way. When people try to think about what they want, very often they immediately think of what they don't want because they're afraid of being disappointed. And you can't focus on what you want and what you don't want and make any progress. So I get people to use their energy in a different way. And this would be what I give you as a little assignment even before you go to the event. Over the next couple of weeks, sit down one day, take out pen and paper or your iPad or whatever you want to do, and I want you to write, describe the job from hell. What, who would you not want to work with? Who would you not want to do for a living? What would you not want to be a part of? Everything you can think of that you would not want to be part of. And then, since you're not sure if you want to work for somebody else or, or have your own business, what would be the business from hell? And then, what, it's amazing how much energy people get when they talk, I, I don't want to be with a person like this, and I don't want to be with somebody selfish, and I don't want to be, I don't want to, blah, blah, blah. and there's a lot of energy that gets out when you write all things you don't want. And then all you got to do is right the opposite, and now you have your job from heaven. You have your relationship from heaven. You have your business from heaven. So very often, this is a great technique to break your pattern, because we're all afraid of failure. We're all afraid of being disappointed. So it's like, get rid of all that. Let's just say what you don't want. People are very clear about what they don't want. You make your long list, and that'll get, that'll, honestly, you'll get energy going. And then this energized state, you can make your move, okay, okay, what's the opposite? What's the opposite? Well, opposite. Holy shit, that's what I'm really after. All right? So you're going to get a lot of clarity and focus. I'm really looking forward to serving you, but that'll get you started right away. All right? Is that helpful for others as well? That'll be my helpful. All right, give him a hand. Thank you, Marcelo. <laughs> Another question. All right, our next question is live with us on Zoom. It okay, is great. Naomi Cummins from Virginia. Naomi. And she says, What is the main component to financial freedom? What are the barriers for people 18 to 25 from becoming successful? All right. Naomi, how are you? Oh, give it up for Naomi. Come on, let her hear you, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, Naomi? Fantastic. Oh, my God. Thank you. Well, my happy to answer your question. Tell me something. Are you 18 to 25? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Okay, good. I like that. Give her a hand for that. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you asking this question for your, for your kids I'm or friends? I wanted to first say that over 30 years ago, I met you and, um, at a seminar with Primerica. Wow. I was that in Detroit? Um, in, I think New York. Oh, New York. I've done, I, I did two of those, New yes. New York. I met you, and I, I remember 30 years ago, because that's from you, I stopped smoking cigarettes, and I bought my first house. Wow, so, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. I get a chance wow. to say thank you. Beautiful. Will you pop your camera just slightly? Because I I want to look in your eyes. There we go. Oh, oh keeps popping down. <laughs> I want to see I your eyes, and I keep on. seeing your jaw in there. There we go. There we yes. go. So, That's beautiful. Yes, so I um since then I've been into the financial world. Yes. Robert Kiyosaki. You name yes. the people. Right. 
even the one that you talk about all the time, Jim Rohn. I love Jim Rohn. I listen to him. Yes. Every day. Yes. So I've been doing that for 30 something years. And what happened, I I did foster care for teenagers for, for about 10 years, trying to help them oh. in the financial world. So yes. I did that years. I stopped that now. But when I was listening to Susie Orman about a month or so ago, she came back on TV. And when I seen her, something hit me and said, the knowledge you have, you need to teach young people finances 101, help them become yes. entrepreneurs. Yes. So I got very excited about it. And I started writing my 12 week seminar of teaching them. Wow, so that's I awesome. Give her a hand for that. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, let me give you a couple, just a couple of highlights in a couple of minutes real fast, because I think this would be helpful for anyone, but certainly 18 to 25. So the question is, what are the barriers for people 18 to 25 to becoming successful financially? And the answer is that most kids 18 to 25 today have not been taught what free enterprise is, exactly what you're going to teach them. In fact, I read a statistic the other day, I don't know how accurate the poll was, but it said 39% of people 18 to 30 think socialism would be great for this country. Now, that's insane. The reason it's insane is they have no experience of socialism. You know, I was invited down to Venezuela. I went down there when it was anti-Chavista versus Chavista and they're ready to kill each other. And if you go down there, you'll see, what do you think all these people are coming across the border? It's a disaster what socialism has done. I actually have, was 24 years old and was invited to the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union was still here, it was pure communism. And I was invited because they brought in a group of 15 experts on mind-body effect. And because I was doing the firewalk, they wanted to do it. They were studying you know, various forms of psychokinesis, things like that. And I spent two weeks traveling the entire nation when it was still the Soviet Union. And it made me a capitalist. I mentioned the other day, because I went to every single city. We were on these trains and caviar and champagne for all these comrades who are supposed to be equal. Everything's supposed to be equal, like, like we're talking about equity these days. There is no equity. There's only equal opportunity. It, if you give everybody exactly the same things, it's been said, if you took all the money in the world and put it back in everybody's hands equally, it would end up back in the same hands because some people understand the fundamentals of free enterprise. So, and free enterprise puts no limit on you. But we don't teach this to our kids, and they have no other reference. So many kids go, oh, you know, I hate America, but they've never been anywhere else. They have no comparison to what's going on because they, they've been taught to think that way. So here's the number one thing that we got to shift in anyone, a young person or an adult. If you're going to become financially independent, the number one thing you have to do is decide to become an owner instead of a consumer. you got to become an owner instead of a consumer. So if you have an Apple phone and you don't own Apple stock, that's crazy. That's totally crazy. The company has grown now. It's worth over $2 trillion. It's more valuable than JP Morgan, Amazon. I can name nine companies that are some of the biggest companies in the world. Amazon, Apple is bigger than all of them. The resources they have are insane. They have way more money in cash than America has or most countries. This is a force of nature. Now, I'm not recommending you all go buy Apple. My point is you don't want to own a product that is that valuable and then not own some portion of the company. Because if you believe in business, even if you believe inflation, I believe inflation's here. We've had inflation forever, sometimes high, sometimes low. But what do you think the chances are that a burger at McDonald's will cost more five years from now, 100%? So if you don't own the stock, you're not getting the benefit of that. You're just gonna have to pay more for the burger. It's crazy. So we got to teach kids to become owners, and there's pride in ownership. You want to start becoming the chess player, not the chess piece, right? And all you got to do is begin that journey. Now, the other day, I showed you, I think I showed you guys that compounded example. I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know if I did it with you or if I did it in the platinum or the VIP group. But let me just remind you, or if you didn't see it, I'll show you real fast. It's really just understanding compounding. So as a two-second version, throw on the screen here in case I showed it to you. Joe's 19 years old. He saves 300 bucks a month. Sounds like a lot, but he doesn't have overhead. Uh, he stops investing at 27. So that means he only invested for eight years. Only 300 bucks a month. And he only invested a total of $28,000. But at retirement, that's worth $1.8 million. If somebody waits till they're 27 and they continue to make $300 a month till they're 65, they only have 1.5. So kids have a huge advantage. It's called time. What does it take to be financially free? 
It takes a little bit of money, which means saving some and investing. It takes time, and it takes a simple and intelligent investing strategy. And here's the goal so you all know. Here's how I would describe it. We all need to build a money machine because everyone on this, you know, in this virtual room from 195 countries right now, we're all, most of us, I should say, not all of us, most of us are financial traders. I am no longer a financial trader. But what do I mean by financial trade? You go, Tony, I don't trade stocks. No, you make the worst trade. You're trading your time for money. As long as you have to trade time for money, you're always going to be financially stressed. Even people that make huge sums of money for their time go bankrupt. Mike Tyson made a half a billion dollars in his career and went bankrupt. Elton John made more money than most people dream of and had to reorganize his finances at that stage. I mean, it's just... I could, go, I could give you names you could say, people think if I make enough money, I'll be rich. No, you have to build a money machine. You have to build something that makes money for you while you sleep. That's when freedom comes. And anyone can do it, and it doesn't take a lot of money. So here's a little silly diagram I'll give you. So here you are. Right now, you work your tail off to earn money. So you have the money for your family. And by the way, write one more thing down for everybody. I always ask people, why, what's the purpose of investment? Why invest? And people say to increase your assets, to build independent. They give me all kinds of answers. They're all nice answers. There's only one reason to invest, income. Write down income is the outcome. Because what you really want to do, let me show you with a graphic here, the simplistic graphic. All you got to do is take some percentage of what you earn. 10%, 15%, 20%, most of you, I couldn't take 2%. It's not true. In fact, they're all, if, if you pick up Money Master the Game, I give you a study there where they had people just save 4%, I think it was 5%, 5% of the money at first, but with every raise, they, they had to save 5% more, and within about 10 years, most people are saving 17%. Well, you say 17% and you invest it over time, not trying to make a big hit on one investment. In a diversified portfolio, you're going to do well. So if you take a percentage of what you earn, you've got to come up with a fixed percentage, 10%, 15 20 and you've got to automate it. If you don't automate it, it won't happen. You got to make it so it's taken right out of your bank account and put in the investment account. You don't even see it. And I'm not just talking about your 401k. I'm talking about more than that or your supernumeration from my Australian friends. Like every country has its own financial schemes per se. But the bottom line, you take a percentage of what you own and you invest it and you build it up until you hit what's called a critical mass. The critical mass is when you've accumulated enough money That the money you have in those investments can throw off enough what? Income. The income from the interest on that actually gives you the ability to do everything in your life without working. You have enough income to do what you do without working. Now, by the way, you know what's crazy? You know, some of you are in this place. I'm in this place. I don't have to work another day of my life. I haven't for a decade and a half. But I work harder today than I ever did then. Why? Because the goal is not to not work. The goal is to not have to work. Because that'll change the way you walk. That'll change the way you move. That'll change how you play. And it's just like the giving part I told you about. If you won't give a dime out of a dollar, you won't give you know a million out of 10 million. Well, if you don't take something out of what you have now and start to invest, you're not going to do it when you make more. It'll never be enough until you build a money machine. So it's really important. And by the way, a lot of people say, yeah, but I've got to be an entrepreneur. I've got to make a ton of money. Well, most entrepreneurs don't make money. Very few do. Like we said, 50% of businesses are gone in the first year. In the first five years, 80% are gone. In the first 10 years, 96% fail. Only 4% make it. And of the 4% that make it, that doesn't mean they're profitable. So think about that. Most entrepreneurs, so, but you can invest in great entrepreneurs. You can own the Google boys, right? You can own Apple. You can own the best people on earth. And I'll give you an example. I, I put this in one of my books. I think a Money Master the Game. There was a guy who worked at UPS, true story, his name's Theodore Johnson. And Theodore Johnson was one of those guys that his gift was lighting people up. He drove the UPS trucks, and if he got sick, people would call and go, you know, where's Theodore, right? And because he would just, people loved being around him. It was just a breath of fresh air whenever he delivered the packages. That's the only skill he had. He never got much more skill. He eventually got involved in some management, but he stayed at UPS his whole life, he never made more than four, shut this down, fourteen thousand dollars a year in annual income. Never made more than fourteen thousand. How much do you think he had at retirement? The answer is seventy million dollars. True story. Seventy million dollars. How? 
a friend of his came to him and said, I'm going to put a tax on you. We're going to put a tax, not for the government, a tax for your future self and family. We're going to take 20% of what you earn and save it. And he's like, 20%? I can't pay my bills on what I'm earning right now. He goes, I know you can't, but your brain will adjust. You will find the way. But there's not, he said, if the, if the IRS changed the rules and charged you 20% more, what would you do? You'd scream, you'd yell, you'd whine, you'd complain, and then you'd pay it, right? So we're going to pay this to you. And he just made it automated for him. And they just put it in UPS stock, which I would never do one stock. You want diversification. But he was fortunate. And UPS went crazy. And he made $70 million over his life. He gave away $35 million to charity while he was alive. Let's give it up for Theodore Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. How pretty awesome is that? So, Naomi, I think, does that give you some foundational things to share that might be helpful? Yes, you have got me started now because I was stuck if I should continue this. But just listening to you now, I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to get 15 young people, and we're going to invest and teach them automatic. That's it. Thank you. Okay, then here's what I want you to do. I want you to get those 15 young people, and I want you to put them in a room with you and get a big screen and... Uh, and speakers, and I'm going to give you 15 scholarships for those kids and yourself for UPW, all right? So you stay on the line, put them in a room together so they can all watch it while you're with them, and then out of that, you can start these financial conversations as well. Give her a big hand to Naomi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Good luck to you, Naomi. Stand up just for a moment, shake your body out, everybody. Come on, shake your body out. Go, go, go. You guys go, Michelle. Show us your moves, Paul. That's it. That's it! Gina and her husband are rocking it! Make some noise while you're doing it! Good time. Nice, George. Oh, yes. High fives everywhere, virtual or in person. And take a little sip of water. A little sip of water to hydrate. And then wake it up in your chair, ladies and gentlemen. That's the energy. Nice job. Hello, Billy. Oh, yes. All right. Grab a seat feeling strong. So now I want to introduce you to a really special man. And uh, if you get a chance to read his book, Green Lights, I think you'll love it. But I, I just thought it'd be really great. Uh, when you get to know somebody underneath, you get to see, I, I have this belief that role models make it real. And someone's not a role model to understand a little bit of what's going on inside, otherwise you can't relate to him. And so, you know, you can look at Matthew McConaughey and go, wow, great actor, or good looking guy or whatever. But people so generalized, they don't know what happens behind the scenes. And so I really encourage you to read his book. But in the meantime, I thought it'd be nice to just do a brief interview with him. We get a little bit of his philosophy of how he looks at problems and challenges and life. 
And then especially towards the end of the interview, pay attention to what absolutely relaunched his career to the highest level that it ever has been. It's not what people would expect. It took some decision making. But before we go to the interview, which I was able to record just the day before yesterday for you, uh, let's first do a little two-minute introduction just in case you're not sure who Matthew McConaughey is. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Oscar-winning actor. Golden Globe award-winning actor. New York Times best-selling author. Bourbon Sippin, American icon. Matthew McConaughey is it? He appeared in over 40 feature films that have grossed over $1 billion total and has become a producer, director, and philanthropist with his Just Keep Living Foundation. I'm gonna talk to you about some things I've learned in my journey. Most from experience, some of them I heard in passing, many of them I'm still practicing, but all of them I do believe are true. Don't half-ass it. Don't half-ass it. Boy, that never goes out of style, does it? What we forget sometimes is that there's a greater pleasure that can come with going through a pain. Do not fall into the trap, the entitlement trap, of feeling like you're a victim. You are not. What gives you the balls to go in and say, it should be me? I'm, I'm a big fan of creating resistance to keep myself in check and to make sure that I'm feeling most alive to overcome the right things in my life. We are not as divided as we are being told we are. If life was nothing but green lights and we didn't have yellows and reds, things that make us pause, hardships, crises, times for introspection, then what the hell would it all be for? There's a logic to the illogic. Unbelievable is the stupidest word in the dictionary. Hey, everybody. Got a thought for you. We got a chance right now to reach for and to grasp a higher ground. Let's take care of ourselves and each other. Win, lose, draw, get what you want, don't get what you want. Whatever the outcome is, freedom's the Saturday. The freedom's what we want. The responsibility is what we need. You don't want to get bound to anything. You want to stay loose. To any of us, whatever those things are, whatever it is we look up to, whatever it is we look forward to, and whoever it is we're chasing, to that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. To that I say just keep living, huh? I want you to take some notes on the belief systems of this man. Give it up Matthew, for Matthew McConaughey, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for taking the time. Good to be here with you, Tony. Uh, so we got uh, over a million people, I think a million three here watching in. And I wanted to bring you forth because you have so much to share with people beyond what people know about you. I mean, uh, we've all known you're one of the great actors of our, our time. And I know it's not blowing smoke. You've got your Golden Globes. You've got your Academy Awards. You've got every nomination you can imagine, award you can imagine. But you as a human being and the journey you've gone on, you put into this book, Green Lights. And when I read it, you know, now I've gotten a chance to know you a little bit as well, but I was blown away. You know, a huge part of my life is showing people that you gotta make decisions when things are uncertain. It's, you know, when it's uncertain, that's when you're gonna find your passion. When it's uncertain, that's when you're gonna grow. And in your book, you talked about this philosophy of stepping in shit, I think is the way you described it, and your 10 goals in life. I'm just. You know, you've had at times in your life where you pushed yourself that most people wouldn't. So I'd like to know, you know, how has that philosophy shaped your life? This idea, your willingness that you have to be willing to step in the doo-doo, so to speak, to make your life really work. Yeah, I think first thing is admitting that stepping in shit's inevitable. Um, You know, if we're gonna try and get through life without stepping in shit, uh, there's no place here to do that on, as far as life as I know it. Um, so first admitting that it's inevitable. Um, also second, I think as my brother Rooster says, how you, how, how, how you gonna know how to do right if you didn't know how to do wrong? A lot of yeah. times we learn by stepping in the shit where we don't want to step Yeah. next time. It's, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's a bit of a process of elimination, Yeah. you know, that, uh, oh, you, you step in shit. I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, that's maybe the least of me, less of me in life. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to figure out how to navigate around it. The next time around the bend, yeah. um, stepping in shit, as I said, inevitable. It is usually a yellow light, as I use green lights uh, uh, metaphors. It's usually a yellow light in life. Uh, yeah. And do we need to take time to stop and look back and go, why did I step in that shit? Yes, because if we don't take time, take a pause, yeah. yellow light, we're going to step in the same pile of shit the next time around. Yeah. So one, it's inevitable. Two, we can learn from it by process of elimination. 
Um, uh, on the goals, you know, the uh, the sole objective, like I say, is the uh, the uh, begin with the end in the mind, with the end in mind. Like I like to write the headline first, and a lot of times live my story to it. Mm. Or if I'm doing a movie, I always like to go in early with uh, the producer and go, "What would the poster look like before we've even shot one thing?" Mm. Now I can look at a poster of a film. If they go, it's a close up of a silhouette of yes. the hero. You, the hero. Okay, I know. I got a good hunch that this movie is going to be a character story, yeah. a character driven story. Yeah. Now, if they say, "Oh, it's a wide landscape and there's these eight silhouettes in the deep background cresting the horizon," I have more of an idea that this is going to be a, 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 an event, a story driven picture. It just gives me a little sense of where we're going. Now. Usually, as you know, when we get there to the end, the poster's never the same. The headline yeah. changes, but yeah. it did give us a compass to head towards it. So yes. goals gives us something to chase, gives me something to chase. Um, as I write in the book, I wrote down 10 goals that I forgot what I had written down. And damn if I didn't look up 30 years later and notice that I had achieved them. That's it was awesome. spooky. It was That's food. really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, well, you know, a lot of people look at the stepping in shit as uh, there's something wrong with me or, you know, that's the red light. I shouldn't go forward. I shouldn't try those things again. And your life is such an example of learn and grow, which is what we're supposed to do. But I think in a social media world, people are so afraid of saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. They don't do anything. So uh, Right. And you're immobilized. Uh, you're, yeah. you're paralyzed by it. And it's it's but I think let's kind of notice that that take on on living is not realistic. That actually, right. that take on living is shit. Excuse That's me. artificial. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's Total not it's bullshit. not real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's bullshit. it is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, without a doubt. Now you also talked about you know you're you're in a really comfortable place in your life. You've been unbelievably successful. You don't have to worry about putting food on the table or paying rent. And oftentimes when people get really comfortable. Um, it stops their growth. I mean, I see guys that in the beginning, they took big risks and then they became really successful because they had nothing to lose back then. Now it's like, oh, I want to hang on to what I got. And then what happens is they're dead inside because they're not growing. So right. I know for, for people that may be stuck out there with some golden handcuffs on them, you know, there's, yeah, things are, yeah. are they're good enough. Why is it important yeah. for you to continually stretch beyond that and push beyond that? And tell me how, maybe an example in your life where you've done that, if you don't mind sharing. Sure. For me, it's about my own sanity. I, I love to know. I love to be certain. I think we all love to be certain. Of course. Um, I also have learned that I want to know what I don't know. I want to be certain with my uncertainty, those blind spots. Yeah. And admitting those is part, I think, of, of certainty, of knowing. Um, I, I got a lust to be certain. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, knowing what you don't know, yeah. knowing what I don't know is still a form of knowing. And I got to find out. Um, I don't want to be foolish. I don't think any of us should be foolish with what we've built, what we've created that is non-negotiable in our past. I don't, I don't believe in taking risks to just say, well, let me be foolish with everything I've built. Because a lot of times we look around and go, hey, I, it, my life is solid. I've, yeah. It's kind of good enough. Don't be foolish with everything you built, but to preserve and live a life where you're just, I'm going to protect this and just preserve this. I'm not going to take a risk. I'm not going to get close to the edge. That's the least is a little stagnation and, and, and paralysis. And I don't think it's, it's not cultivating your garden that you've grown. It's not taking care of what you're protecting either. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been said many times in many different ways. Life is motion. It's, it's moving forward. Uh, the failure of things that we just talked about, of being told no, or that's not popular, or that's wrong. We hesitate, but that's not real. Yeah. And 99% of the time when we do fail, the, the people that we really respect in life, I know when I've failed and fallen on my ass or stepped in my SHIT, or the, the coolest people in my life were the ones on the field that were like, help me up and said, yeah, me too. Way to, yeah. way to be in the game. Way to take yeah. the chance. Way to take yeah. the risk. Yeah. So to go back to the beginning, for me, it was just, it's just sanity. I'd rather, I'd rather fail and find out than win out just waiting yeah. and going. I, I don't know. This is good enough. Yeah. 
So many people, you know, they ask me, what's the secret to happiness? And, you know, you travel the world, and you and I have spent a lot of years learning from this experience of life. And I always tell people, progress equals happiness. You know, if you're not Amen. growing in your relationship, if you're not growing in your business, if you're not growing in your life, you're going to feel dead inside. It doesn't matter what you have. So they have to put yourself in that place where you're making progress. In order to make yeah. progress, it's like everybody wants things to be better. No one wants to change, right? right. <laughs> but right. you know, you got you got to take that step. You got to let go of the handcuffs. I, I, I'm glad you said that. You still need to be smart about what you're doing, but it's it's taking risks that are intelligent. It's taking risks where if you say to yourself, "If I don't do this, I'm I'm going to miss out on growing as a person, as a father, as a husband, as a human and being, not, as an and artist." I'm not going to know. I'm That's not right. going to know. What are most people's regret once they can no longer find out? Yeah, either on right. their deathbed. What's most people's regret? Yeah, not knowing. So I didn't true. take the risk to find out. Damn that's it! Right. What was I that's afraid right. of? You know. So true. Hey, and on and on progress, which you bring up. A lot of times, we we people throw the word progress to mean yes on everything, and it's not necessarily yes on everything. Yeah, that's true. It would be yeah. anarchy if it was yes to everything. It is also sacrifice. And saying no to certain things, as we talked about earlier, that maybe don't compound our own personal assets, yes. that don't pay us back. Yes. Um, and progress, especially we talk about where we are today in the world, is a lot about preserving and, and, and utilizing those tried and true, tested values that worked yesterday, that in yeah. the weather of uncertainty in the storm today, we can rely on them still. So it's also about preservation, not just saying yes to everything. So uh, the hardest thing for a lot of people to do say is no. I can imagine in your life you've got a million requests. So again, thank you for today with all the requests you have. Um, you know, one of the other pieces that I think is, you know, when people go to Unleash the Power Within, one of the things that they get really clear about is uh, that the worst experiences of their life are often the best. Mm -hmm. Not in the moment, ah. but, you know, if, no. you have a, if you develop a belief that life is always happening for you, not to you, even though it looks right. like it's happening to you, and you look for it, most people can think of the worst event they had five, 10 years ago, and you go back and go, can you see how that happening maybe five or 10 years later, you see why it happened. It made you stronger, yeah. made you care more, made you give more. And I, you live this. Can you tell us an example where you had a really potentially negative situation that really became a yeah. positive in your life? Well, all right, let me go here. I, <laughs> and everyone's had this. My father moved on. Mm. No denying. That's a red light. That is a negative. No one wants that to happen. I didn't want that to happen. When he when he moved on, I didn't think he could be killed. I thought he was the abominable snowman, and then and, and all of a sudden it came out of nowhere. But the gift that came out of that, the green light, the positive that just came out of that, and I wouldn't say I was looking for it. I just allowed it came to me is Boy, did I get more courage. I knew I didn't have the safety net of my father to have my mm. back. Mm. That was above the law and above religion and above a bad guy out there. I always knew I had him, and now that was gone. Yeah. Well, a lot of the things that he had been teaching me as a young man to be, I was just sort of going, yeah, I'll get to that. But I, I got my dad's got my back. If I really get in a pinch, well, all of a sudden, he's gone. I leveled down. I leveled up. I remember everything that I in the world that I had over mortal things that I had too much reverence for, I looked down and looked them in the eye. Everything in the world that I was condescending and passionizing, looking down on, I rose up and looked them in the eye. The world mm. felt flat. I had courage. I took mm. risk. I moved forward mm. as the man that he had been teaching me to be instead of just acting like it was time to become the man. It was a major gift. There's, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd be sitting here right now talking to you with the life I've got if my dad would have passed away at that time. I had things in the reserve tank and his moving on maybe get out of the reserve tank and put things into action. Now, it doesn't deny the tragedy that it was for me. It doesn't deny yeah. the pain. I wasn't washing over it going, no, no, get past this. I wasn't doing that. I grieved. I still grieve. Yeah. But in it was also a gift that I noticed pretty soon after it happened and have noticed daily since. And not having, not having a net <laughs> is one of the most valuable things in life. Um, I it, found in my own it. life as well, you know? So I, my, my best work, I'm sure your best work is what you got no, it's live, it's one real, take. it's right now. And if you, don't, if you don't hit it, it's over. And you know, that's when, you, that's when the best comes through you. It's like somehow- There's great freedom in that. Yeah, There's there is. There's freedom and, in that. 
And it develops a certainty when you've done it enough times that you start to trust that you'll be guided when you're trying to serve something bigger than yourself. Uh, you, you know, you're touching on what my next question was, because I've heard you say before that death and family crisis and newborns are all three things that shake up your floor, so oh. to speak, clarify you. So you've touched yeah. a little bit on the death side. What about the newborn side? You know, I've experienced that too just recently. I have my 20 month year old little daughter here, you know, on top of my four other kids that are adults. It's been yeah. a wonderful experience. But tell me a little bit more of what, you also talk about those coming in threes, if I remember right. So I'd love to hear your philosophy on that. Well, they seem to. I mean, look, I, in 2007, I was a very successful romantic comedy actor. Loved it. But I was so successful at rom-coms that no dramas that I was actually getting interested in were coming my way or being offered. Mm. Just not, not a question. No McConaughey, stay in your rom-com lane. Now, at that time, Camilla got pregnant with her first child and a family crisis came up that could turn tragic any day. Those things that sober you up. Yeah. So I decide, you know what, I'd been go mulling over my mind. Well, if I can't do what I want to do acting wise, if I'm not getting off of the dramas I want to I, I want to do, I'm going to quit doing what I've been doing. So I'll stop the rom-coms. to kind of neutralize, unbrand, so to speak. So I moved to Texas, shut down the production company, dealt with the family crisis and help hopefully shepherd my pregnant wife into having as healthy of a child as we could, she could yes. have. I stuck to that decision for over two years uh, of not doing the rom-coms before the dramas that I wanted came. Now that two years was shaky for me, but I damn sure know that that family crisis gave me a lot of fortitude to go. Yeah. In context, I know I'm dealing with what needs to be dealt with. Right. My career over there is something I wanted, I want to, and this career change is something I want, but I'm dealing with something I need right now that's vital. So I was much more committed and secure to my decision because of that. Now, secondly, because Camilla's pregnant, and then I have my first, we have a first child. Yeah. As you know, is a man ever more masculine or clear <laughs> than after their first child? I mean, the yeah. head and the heart. There's yeah. an auto bond between yeah. them. It's like yeah. whatever instincts you have yeah. after a newborn, I mean, triple down on them. Yeah. You know what I so mean? Go, go to Vegas. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> you know? So true. And so that gave me a lot of perspective to stick to my decision because mm. I wasn't able to go get what I wanted career-wise. They were not offering. Hollywood was not offering me what I wanted. But what I did is I removed myself long enough and dealt with some real life stuff that all of a sudden, Hollywood, Hollywood was like, what's McConaughey up to? Where's he been? What's he doing? He yeah. told us no, 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 no to all these other rom-coms and action comedies for so long. You know who might be a good novel idea for this drama or the, just what I was looking for? Let's give him a call. So it was a two-year of unbranding wow. that I would not have been, before I got to rebrand and do dramas. But, I, but the two years... As hard as they were, they would have been hell if I wouldn't have had the family crisis that I was dealing with, plus this great thing to look forward to in the newborn child yeah. that entered my life, that my life was so vital and I was so so clear headed and heart and spiritually that I've, that I've ever been. Then when what I wanted came to me in the dramas, I attacked them and just ate them up. Uh, was Dallas Buyers Club shortly thereafter? Or did shortly they... thereafter. I wow. had the rights to Dallas Buyers Club, but no one wanted to make it with me. Wow. I'd had the rights. I'd had that script and hold, I was holding the rights to that for years, but no directors you, wanted I'm to sorry, make it. I'm sorry, did you produce that as well? Comment. I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot of people a... came and tried to steal that script too. A lot of people, a lot of other actors and directors that tried to steal it. I was like, uh-uh, one day, one day I'll be able to do this. But no one wanted to do it with Rom Com McConaughey for quite a few years. Wow, what a great example. That's, that's uh, probably the one you're most acknowledged for. You're not by so many, but it's what you won your Academy Award for. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Yeah. That's, that couldn't be a better example. Thank you for sharing that. That's just killer. But you're so right. It's like it creates new openings in us, doesn't it? You know, it's like everything in life. You, you, if you let it touch you, if you don't let it kill you, if you let it touch you, let it move you, it leads to a deeper part of you, and the deeper part of you leads to new opportunity of every sort. So... 
Tell me, what would you say to the people out there that are struggling with questioning the timing? They might know, mm. God, I need to make a change. I, I need to you know, leave this relationship or I need to go mm. full in in this relationship. I need to start a business or I need to leave my job. But I don't know if this is the right time because it's, it's always the wrong time, right? No, but it's always what wrong. Would you, what would you say to people about that? What would be your answer that could help them right now if they're on the edge thinking, I know I need to do these things, but don't see, I, I don't see how I can do it right now? Okay. Because you've made those tough decisions. Yeah, and a, I mean, the question I think we got to ask ourselves of when we want to make a change or should we make a change or how should we make a change is ask ourselves, is it, is it, has, it, has the way I'm doing it ceased to pay me back? Mm. And I mean, that can be bank account. That's also emotion. soul's yeah. account too. Yeah. You know, um, um, uh, is, is the way I'm going about thing not creating compounding assets for me? That may be in a re relationship. Yeah. You know, um, are we getting a return on the investment that we're making on ourselves? Yeah. I think that's what we all want. Yeah. And when we're not getting that, we got to go, hey, maybe the way I think I'm doing it <laughs> is not the way it's being received. Yeah. Maybe the way that, uh, that, that, that I actually think I'm doing it is getting received uh, as I think it is, and it's not paying me back. I need to rearrange. Um, yeah. Also, the next thing is let's talk about that word more. More is a big word. Like we were redefining progress earlier. More is we're kind of told today to be, well, more is quantity. Yeah. Usually money. Probably. Okay. If the quantity of our more isn't adding to the quality of our yeah. lives, then we're using the wrong calculator. Yeah. Right. So what's our more? Maybe it's better health. Maybe it's maybe it's better spirit. Maybe it's a better relationship. Uh, maybe it's being a better father, being a better mother, a better husband. You know, define our more before we're going into change of what, how we're going to go about getting more. Yeah. Now that decision seems to be a tricky balance, a fun balance rather, should I say, of knowing what we want is cool, but knowing when to do what we want is the hard part. I mean, it, or even it, knowing it, what we need sometimes, right? Because what, yeah. what we need don't always match in the moment. No, and when but those what you two need, match, always reward you more than what you want, right? Long term. And it, when what we want is what we need, I think that's that's heaven on earth. Yeah, that's I agree it. with you. I agree. You know, with you. when those two match and feed each other, and our desires are actually giving us what we need, and what we need, we actually desire. Yeah. Honey, hole. Yeah. Um, home run. So, 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 so. Knowing when to do something is a very hard part because like you said earlier, it's never a good time. Yeah. How many times we bump things? I do it too. Let's bump it to the next year. It's not the time. No, we'll bump it to next Thursday. You, we get busy. Life inter intervenes and all of a sudden we look up and the, the, the challenge is let's not look up because a year can go by, man. A decade can go by when we sat there in limbo yeah. Yeah. and we kind of didn't make a decision. COVID yeah. did this to us all. Three years yeah. of limbo. Yeah. Three years of I'm having tr I've, I made another plan and I had to cancel it. I made another projection and I had and it and I didn't yeah. meet it. It didn't happen. Yeah. So now they're coming out of that and it's still in certain times. We how far ahead can we project? We're little. We're kind of we're kind of getting our, our 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 baby steps going again with how far in the future we can project. But don't sit there and get caught in limbo. Yeah. Again, sometimes it doesn't matter what decision you make. Just make one and commit to it. It That's will right. reveal whether it was the right one or the wrong one, and it will at least create movement. And again, as we talked about earlier, if it's the wrong decision, kind of turns out to be not as big of a deal as we thought it was going to be in the beginning. Yeah. You know, I, I interviewed Norman Schwarzkopf while he was still alive. He became actually a good friend and about leadership multiple times. Yeah. He, he told me an interesting story. He told me a time when he worked for this general and he was just a private and he would had screened for weeks all this material. The, the military forces at the Pentagon had been trying to make a decision for 10 years and two sides argued against it. So the amount of data was there was just incredible. So he and four other staff members read all this stuff. They tried to give their summaries, but even their summaries were huge. And yeah. then the meeting got pushed up and he said, the general came in, he let one side give their side, the other side gave their side. And at the very end, he said, do that one. And everyone stood <laughs> up and said, yes, sir, and walked out. <laughs> And he said afterwards, he said, I was in horror. This, he couldn't possibly make a decision like that. He couldn't possibly know all the things that are involved with this. I mean, what if it's the wrong decision? So he said, yeah. I, I just, I worked up the courage and I went and knocked on his door and I said, sir, you know, permission to speak freely. He says, okay, at ease. He said, sir, you couldn't possibly have read that. You couldn't possibly know all you need to know to make that decision. 
And the journal said, of course not. He said, sir, how could you make the decision? He said, because no one's been able to make the decision for 10 years. For 10 years, both sides have argued. I picked one, and we're going to find out now whether it's the right one or not. If it's the wrong one, we're going to find out quicker than sitting for another 10 years. Right? I never forgot that. Such a great example. Hey, man, yeah. Make one and go for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've done it. I've got friends that, you know, were in, had a big decision to make, and were limbo for a, a day, a week, a month, and months turned to year. Next year. Resolution. Oh, year went by. Next year, all of a sudden, decade went by. Yeah. But friends that are in the second decade of that, yeah. and not the not moving, the decision seems to be that much more important and gets That's bigger. Right. The longer you wait, the harder it is. Harder right? to push up the hill yeah. when yeah. it started off is just a little pe pebble, and it's like, well, yeah. push it, make a choice. That's right. Find out. That's right. So true. So true. So one more question, and then mm -hmm. I want to ask you about what you're doing next, and we'll finish up. Uh, it leads to, you know, people develop that habit now of not, because they've had so much uncertainty, being at home, how do I make plans for the future? The plans are always changing. So now that thing you just talked about has become a habit for a lot of people. Yay. And the biggest habit is now avoiding that four-letter word that you can't get around if you want to have an extraordinary life, and that's risk. You know, yes. I, I think about our founders of this country and what they think of what people try to avoid today to be safe, even not hearing somebody else's point of view for some people as a way of having safety. Tell me how you look at risk, because you've taken some significant risks throughout your life. When people read green lights, they'll be blown away by all the decisions you've made along the way and crazy situations you're in. But how do you look at risk and how do you deal with risk as you look at it, as you see it? So you may know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this, but I... I, I and told from the outside world, man, you're a real risk taker. That's one of your strengths. You really take risk. Yet at the same time, every time I do my New Year's resolutions, I think one of my weak points is not taking enough risk. <laughs> I think I'm not great. taking enough. Yeah. Um, well, that's know, where the I, growth comes. Yeah. Yeah. I I met, I, I try to to measure my risk, again, going back to what I was saying earlier on what will fill my soul's account, what will fill my account and take care yes. of my family. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm 53. I've got a wife. I've got three children. I, I think I'm doing for me. I see my life as more than good enough, but I have things I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, you don't say Tony, you don't say to me, McConaughey, let's throw in a backpack and go hike Molly again tomorrow for 30 yeah. days. Yeah. I just go, wait a minute, I got some things, I got some dependents. I can't yeah. just quite take those one-way tickets That's as right. freely as I could. And yes. when I miss them, I'll, I'll take the... The choices I'm trying to make now are more legacy choices. The risk mm. for more legacy, not the risk to necessarily preserve what I've got. Got it. That makes sense. Um, because I get it. I, 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 this Whatever limitations I put on myself... And I've got them. I know they're fictitious. Mm -hmm. I know I'm full of BS <laughs> when I put a <laughs> when I put a limit up there. I, I think I think you know our channel. You know the old Icarus uh, uh, um, story, right? Yeah, yeah. Father takes son. They fly. Don't fly too close to the sun. Yeah. Boy does. Gets curious. Wings melt. Falls to the ocean. Yeah. I think most of us suffer from the ver reverse of Icarus's problem. I think a lot of us think it's getting hot. Woo, it's getting hot in the kitchen. I can't do any better. This is as good as it gets. And you're like, dude, it's only 50 degrees Fahrenheit, man. What are you talking about? Your wings ain't close to melting. Um, I think most of us suffer from that. Yeah. And and, and we should be told or, or convince ourselves and believe, no, fly much higher. We're, yeah. It's almost an arrogant thing. It's not being timid that we don't go higher. It's almost arrogant that mm -hmm. we don't go higher and further to think like, no, this is the only, this is, is the capacity of my ability. Yeah. This is this is the capacity of my potential. That's an arrogant notion. Yeah. To be the judge of that. Yeah. Mortally. Um, yes. So I look, I measure them. I love to pre prepare. Um, yeah. But once I'm in the game or once I make a choice, I fully commit to it. Yeah. And I'm pretty dexterous at calling audibles along the way. Yeah. Um, and again, Taking the risk and the, making the choice and just going to find out is a lust of mine that I have to scratch that that itch. That's cool. It's the not knowing that keeps me up at night. Yeah. It's not the failing at the risk that keeps me up at night. It's the not knowing what if I did. That's what I keeps love me that. up.
I always tell people, if you want to, we're all going to have fear, right? But the best way to use fear is turn it on itself. Be afraid that you're going to miss out on who you could have become, what you could have created, what you could have given, what you could have shared, what you could have done for your family, could have done for your world. You're so right. One last question. I'm, uh, Green Lights, you sold, I think, three and a half, almost four million copies of that book. And I think if anybody reads it, it changes their understanding of who you are. But more importantly, it gives them these, this different mindset about Green Lights. And so I have two questions. Number one, we didn't really talk about the top, but define your green lights, if you would, since they haven't read the book yet. And then yeah. I know you're going to do a special thing in April here to really share with people, go deep with your philosophy and really help them. And what you've accomplished is amazing. But you've kind of given people the roadmap of how you've made this happen in your career. And, um, and it's, yeah. it's brilliant and it's practical and it's funny and it's emotional. I want everybody to read your book. But this course that you're going to do, tell us a little about what you're going to do in April, but maybe first tell us what green lights mean since we didn't touch on that in the beginning. Well, yeah, I will be coming there early April with you, Dean, a special guest. We're going to get under the hood of, of, of green lights, uh, a philosophy that kind of came to me, something that I look back over 40 years of my life and noticed, oh, well, kind of, hey, here, there's, there's some science here to the satisfaction. You, I see choices you made that engineered some success. And yes. some joy in your life. Yes. Oh, that wasn't just happens. Now, mind you, I also uncovered some things. I'm like, well, you tried a few things out there that didn't really work. You engineered some shit to step in too. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm a fair share, fair share of that. <laughs> the idea of green lights is this: like the traffic light. Green. We all love green lights. They say go affirm our way. Yes, more out of boy, please, Moss. We don't like yellow lights because they slow us down. They make us take a little inventory, look over our shoulder, get a little retrospective. Hmm. Don't really like those, but we'll do them. And we sure as hell don't like red lights because they stop us in our tracks. They're a crisis, they're a tragedy. But if life was just green lights and had no yellows and reds, I think we'd just, we'd get dizzy and run in circles until we ran out of gas. Yeah. And what would you, what would you do? Where's the resistance? Where's the inventory? Where's the evolution of the yellow light? Now, at the yellow light, Sometimes it's slow down. Sometimes it's put the damn pedal to the metal and deny it's a damn problem and blow through the SOB, right? Yeah. yeah. But at the red light, which will eventually turn green, what do we do there when we have to take that inventory, when we're in that place where we're like, man, this is a real problem? Yeah. What do we do? What are we going to learn from there? I talked about my father dying earlier. That was a major yeah. red light. We don't skim right by it and deny it, but we also try not to let that define the, the, the negative aspect of that, the pain of that, try not to let that define us going, going forward. Um, so, and what does happen to every it eventually turns green, yeah. but on this, on this path of, of life, we can engineer our green lights. We also, uh, uh, with the choices we make, we can better call audibles when we just jump off the cliff to find out. And it's not engineered, but yeah. there are there's 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 ways of making there's there's value in the decisions we make, and there's a science behind the decision we make, even when we're winging it, yeah. even when we're having to wing the situation. And I'll tell you this, Tony, when I look back at my book, I thought that 95% of my successes were all engineered. 60% mm. were, yeah. but another 40% yeah. were. Ways that I called when I, when I was not prepared, but I made the right calls when I had jumped off the cliff, when I was in the game, when I read the defense, read the resistance, yeah. read the offense and played it and, and, and was in the flow of the moment. But that I wouldn't have had that those positions or been in that place to call the right audibles unless I hadn't had the preparation of the playbook or the plan or yeah. the blueprint of the yeah. decision making for how to engineer it. Yeah. Just like a, just like making a movie. You start with the script. You love it. Don't change a word. But then you get in the get you get on yeah. set and you yeah. get inspired and you start to yeah. change things. Good, you should. But yeah. it's based off of the blueprint that you started with. So heavy blueprint to start. Help we can create green lights, engineer them. Because they also that blueprint helps us wing it and make the right decisions when we've jumped off the cliff and we're trying to figure it out how to fly on the way down. That's awesome. And what are you going to do in April? We're going to have you for several hours a day. You're going to walk through the philosophy. Tell us a little bit what you're going to do in April because I want people to be able to take advantage. So I'm going to come on uh, and, uh, like I said, going to get under the hood of, of, of green lights. We're going to try and put yes. some of the science to this satisfaction. And it'll be science that 
it's not just personal to me. It, yeah. it, it's 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 practical and constructive. To, and anyone can be the subject of the science. Yeah. Anybody out there can be the subject to going. Oh, I see. When I sacrifice this, I gain that. I when I say no to this plastic ring today, I can get a gold crown tomorrow. Now, part of it is delayed gratification, but also a lot of it is having that opportunity and that chance to have your cake and eat it too and eating it right now and going and doubling down on it. Yeah. But there's an art that seems to be the art of living, but there is a science to that art. And we're going to share some, some, some means and ways to try and hopefully get more satisfaction out of our lives, which I think we're all after. I know I still am. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we're going to invite everybody to be able to participate with you on that time. And I know the, You've, you've made a really special offer. Anybody who wants to go VIP, you're going to offer. If they're going to unleash the power within, they can go yep. there for free. So we're excited yep. to sponsor that. Now, I can't wait for people to go deeper with you, Matthew. You're, just, you're a beautiful soul. I'm, I'm going to blow and smoke your way. You know who you are. But people will really get to see beyond the incredible acting what it is mm. that got you there. And I love this way of developing a philosophy of life that allows mm. you to take in all the <laughs> crazy experiences from the shit to the beauty and find there's beauty in it all still and i think that's what you've managed Amen. to do and you're living life on your terms i mean you left hollywood and went to texas and got your family there i just i can't say how much i respect you so thank you for taking the time i know how busy you are we really all appreciate it and i hope people watching have been inspired and we'll see you in april we'll see you in april tony great to talk with you and spend time howdy to everybody out there we hope to see you in early april um right. just keep living take care brother give it up for matthew mcconaughey everybody Hopefully you can see why I wanted you to meet Matthew and get a little insight that man beyond the actor. Give it up for him again, ladies and gentlemen. If there's anything I'd share with you, it's in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. It's not your conditions that shape your destiny. It's your decisions about what to focus on, about what to believe, about what to do, about how to invest in yourself, how to learn, how to grow, how to expand about what to do in relationships and business. It's those decisions that change us. So my hope is this week will get you to make some decisions. And if you listen to him, his greatest breakthroughs in his life was he made a decision the most scary of all. I'm going to not do anything here, hoping they'll give me opportunity. And for two years, no one gave him a single piece. We talked off camera as well even more about just how scary it was for him. He's like, you know, you're used to getting all these offers and nothing. But then all of a sudden, he gets to do Dallas Buyers Club and does the greatest work of his life and you know, wins an Oscar and yet also still lives on his terms. And think about those green lights, yellow lights, red lights. The green lights, you know to go. The yellow lights is you're scared as hell, but you just push through anyway. You just make the decision and do it, right? That's what courage is. You're scared, but you do it anyway. And red lights, I love what he said. Red lights, you take stock, but you know the green light's about to happen. It's time to get back in the game again. So I hope some of that philosophy will help you. And all those going to Unleash the Power Within, you're going to get an email because he's going to invite you to come VIP at no cost to spend time with him in April where you go a little deeper. So that's another gift for all of you going to UPW. All right? Well, guys, this is it. It's been an amazing time. <laughs> no more bonus sessions. We spent almost a week together. I hope you've been deeply touched. Give it up for everybody for all their energy. And I look forward to seeing many of you at the UPW. We'll see you then. Here's KK, give it up for KK! Thank you so much. Let's give a big round of applause to Tony Robbins and Matthew McConaughey. yet. I've got like 90 seconds with you right now, but just in case you missed it, I want to bring up a visual because Matthew did something extraordinary. He is gifting every single UPW Unleash the Power Within attendee access to his first ever virtual masterclass 
forever. This is coming up this April. So if you're going to unleash the power within, this is included. This is a bonus. And in, in terms of bonus, we don't have any more bonus days, as Tony said. So this is your last opportunity to join us in the Total Transformation Package, the 2023 Total Transformation Package. And in case you missed it, I want to go through in 90 seconds of what this is, because in two days, this offer is gone. This opportunity is gone. The bonuses is, are, are gone. The most incredible price we've ever done. So I want to give you one more comprehensive just overview of what this opportunity is. First things first, you're getting the four fully immersive days with Tony Robbins at Unleash the Power Within, his flagship seminar. And I'd love to give you a little visual of what this looks like. This is not, you know, being in Tony's basement, although it's incredible. You are going to be in his studio that he designed for full immersion. It is completely body and soul pumping, electrifying every part of your nervous system and infusing this new identity into your body day and night for four days, 10 to 12 hours a day. And if you're thinking, holy smokes, this is intense. It's intense because it's your life. It's intense because we want to move this from just knowledge that exists in your mind into your body, transforming it from your nervous system. So it's a part of who you are, like a muscle, and you can tap onto it at any moment. So this is the reason you say yes to this for an experience like of this magnitude. That is Unleash the Power Within. And not only that, you're also going to be getting, he's never done this before, a pre-training session that we will do before the event even begins to prep you for this incredibly beautiful experience. And then you're going to get a post integration session, a take action workshop. And let's pull up on the screen, just an overview. So you can see all of these things laid out. So you really understand the value. You'll have the integration take action session just a couple days after Unleash the Power Within ends. So you can plug in everything that you learned into a bulletproof bulletproof plan so that it's locked in and your next step is mandatory. It's not optional. It's really going to happen. And then you're going to get Tony's audio program called Ultimate Edge. This is his greatest, most best-selling audio program of his entire career, 46 years. You're going to get that tonight. So the moment that you say yes, upwnow.com, this will come into your inbox. You can listen to it. It's go at your own pace for 10 days and it'll be a great start for you from now until Unleash the Power Within, which starts in 44 days from today. And then and not only that, you have all the amazing bonuses. Um, earlier today, we had a beautiful question come in about financials. And I want to pull up on the screen here. You are getting Tony's financial fundamentals course that he assembled himself. People paid $85,000 to be in a room where some of these trainings took place. And he curated a package that takes you from wherever you are today to wherever you want to go. Whether you have $1 in the bank or millions, this is for anyone in their financial journey. You can learn the psychology of wealth, investing, um, smashing consumer debt, whatever you need is in here. So you're going to get that the moment you say yes. Well, not the moment after UPW will give it to you. So you're in state and ready to receive it. The second bonus from Dean Graziosi, this is a confidence masterclass, absolutely priced priceless. And then for Matthew McConaughey, we're also getting VIP access to his event. So in conclusion, all of this is so amazing. It's over $2,000 of real, true, actual value inside of the Unshakable Challenge only. You're getting all of that for 495 bucks or three payments of $183. So I wanted to walk through that. Hopefully you got all the details and you have no questions, but this is completely virtual. You can do it from anywhere in the world, March 16th through the 19th. And we would love to have you. There's about 48 hours to get yourself in before this offer is gone forever. And why not go to bed at night knowing that your next step is locked in? I want to leave you with a quote from Tony that I love. It's changed my life. I think about it almost daily. And he says, and you could type this in the chat box if you're a fast typer. He says, never leave the scene of a decision without scheduling in a commitment that guarantees your next result. So if what you want is something in your relationships or in your finances or whatever you learned this week that sparked something in you and said, this is my next level, schedule in a commitment that helps you get there. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the one person that can help you do that is Tony Robbins. So we hope you join us at Unleash the Power Within. Other than that, friends, we have had the most beautiful five, six days with you. We've become a family. This has been a beautiful, beautiful journey. And we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for putting your life first, for saying yes to yourself. You've been unshakable this week. And we can't wait to see you at Unleash the Power Within in 44 days. Have a beautiful day. Get yourself up. Celebrate yourselves, you unshakable human beings. And we'll see you at the event in March.